Hi everyone and welcome to Randy's Kitchen. Today we have some pierogies going on. Canada being so multiculturalized, you'd find these across every table throughout Canada. What a pierogi is, is it comes from Eastern Europe and it is basically a dumpling stuffed with a filling of your choice. More commonly known as putting cabbage and bacon in it, but today we have a season of butternut squash. Let's get going. Let's go ahead and get started with the ingredients. So first off, we wanna make the pastry case. This is flour, a little bit of warm water. We are gonna go with a little bit of butter, a spoonful of butter. And we're gonna just go ahead with a little bit of water, putting it in there, and we're gonna slowly mix. Now, all together, you just really wanna make sure it's a firm and everything's all Tight. So we're gonna go a little bit of some sea salt. You want your pastry to have a little bit of love inside of it. Now if you overdo the water, just put a little bit more flour in. We're using some plain flour here. And just keep on folding over and over. It needs a really good mix until the dough feels smooth. You don't really want any lumps inside of it. And then after we're done this, we're gonna put a little bit of cling wrap over top of it and just firm it up in the fridge for a little while while we're making our filling. So I'm just gonna push it down on there as you can see. It's nice and tight in there. Squash here from yesterday. This was cooked off. Just gonna skin it all out. Next up, we are gonna go with, I got some hazelnut, or you can use nutmeg, whatever's easy at home. I got the whole the hazelnuts going in there. Just gonna add just more of a nice earthy flavor. It is the winter, so I'm gonna do something a bit different here. We're gonna grind a bit up, and then we're just gonna give them a rough chop. A rough chop, and leave them a little bit chunky in there. So again, a little bit more texture's coming out when you're biting into the pierogi, getting a bit of crunch, getting a little bit of an explosion of a soft nut. There we go. So if you don't have hazelnuts, use walnuts, use Almonds, use any nuts, or in fact, just keep the nuts out and you might want to go for a different flavor altogether. So next up, I'm gonna take some fresh coriander. Now don't worry about the stems. The stems are actually loads of flavor, but you really want to chop them enough so you're not sticking in your teeth. Get it all in there, waste not, want not. Boom. So let's go ahead and hit it with a little bit of cumin. Smell that, that's the smell of fresh cumin. Reminds me of my time I spent in India for two years working and learning about the culture, more important, learning about the food. Now I'm going with black pepper. You can go with white pepper. Again, go with chili, go with whatever you like. We're just gonna smash it all in there. You can smell the coriander coming out, you can smell the cumin coming out. And I think mixed with the squash, they're flavors that are meant for each other. Perfect, let's go for the taste. What we're looking for here, and I'll tell you if I find it, we're looking for the background of the cumin. We're looking for the smokiness flavor. My mouth's watering, going for the kill. And then the sweetness. It's coming alive. I got the crunch from the nuts. I got the sweetness. I got the, the smokiness from the, from the cumin. And then once we poach these, these are gonna go in with a little bit of bacon, give some saltiness and obviously some black pepper. So 25 minutes has passed roughly. We're gonna go back to the pastry. A little bit easier to work with than when we first started it. And as you can see, it's actually, you can see right in there, it's definitely moldable, it's definitely smooth. Have a look there, come on. It's gonna make it easier to fold over. So let's go ahead, let's get started. So don't be scared to dust your countertop and we're gonna be rolling these out. So you can see right here, I got a makeshift rolling pin. You don't need to go out and buy a rolling pin. Grab the, grab the cling wrap and roll away. Look at that, nothing sticking to it. It's exactly what we're looking for. Mama would be proud. Now we don't want to roll this too thin. So let's go ahead, we're looking for about five or six of these for our portion that we're gonna make today. One. Two, 
Now if it's not cutting through, get a knife and cut it through. Let's go ahead and stuff these bad boys. Look at the color, the freshness. Give it a quick stir, spoon it a bit. So notice as I'm going on half the side there, half the side. Next up, we got to fold them over. So let's get the edges wet. We're gonna fold them over and we're just gonna, a little bit of a pinch. And what the fork's gonna do is really bind it together like a, like a jigsaw puzzle, a mini jigsaw puzzle. Ah, those look, look fabulous. Now, you really wanna make sure they're sealed tightly so they don't bust. We're gonna end up poaching these in a little bit of water. Now that our progies are formed, we're gonna put them in the fridge, let them cool down a bit more before we poach them. But in the meantime, we're gonna get a little bit of flavor country going, and that is the bacon. We're gonna fry those bad boys up in some bacon. Bacon, get this chopped. The idea behind the bacon is to add loads of flavor. We have the saltiness coming in, the sweetness of the squash, and more importantly, all that fat is love. Next up is the onion. Well, the bacon is rendering down, we're gonna dice up the onion. Another part of the flavor that's gonna go in. Now I'm using a red onion, but feel free to use any onion you like. I've chopped it pretty small there, you can see. I wanna cook this fast, because once the bacon is done, I wanna throw the onion in. I wanna brown the onion a bit, but not too much. I still wanna save a little bit of the integrity from the onion, get a little bit of chunk, crunch, get a little bit of the chewiness from it. Perfect, so our bacon's nearly there. We're gonna toss our onions in, then we're gonna get ready to blanch our pierogies. Now the idea behind blanching the pierogies, bring them to, just we just wanna cook the edges of them, cook the outside of them. We're gonna finish them off in the pan and make them crispy. So, pierogies ready to go. This is a very exciting moment. So we got the pierogies in right now. They're slowly simmering, as you can see. Having a little bit of trouble sparking up there, it's a bit cold. But we just wanna blanch these off and we're really gonna finish them in this lovely bacon fat. Now we're at the exciting point. Everything from this process is almost done. As you can see, the process in whole is fairly straightforward. Now, if you wanna cut it down, I'd suggest making the pierogies, freezing them. And you can always make a lot more pierogies than what you need. Last one. There we go. So we're gonna add a little bit of love in. Some butter. What we're after here is a lovely crust on the outside. And it's starting to happen. You can see the brown. Oh, this is gonna be so good. Look at the golden brown that we have on these. And more importantly, the crust. We're just gonna bring some love and some texture. Now, for all you Eastern Europeans out there, I know you're gonna bust my chops on the size of these. But the flavor, you cannot dispute, is going to be phenomenal. And it's definitely big enough that you could be putting this as a centerpiece and everybody could be grabbing one or two progies. All the crusty bacon on top. Look at that. Next up, a little bit of green onions. Add a little bit of freshness green onions to things like this is like adding parsley to pasta. 